so much fucked up shit to get into. Snickers. Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Cal Dunjal. Hey, everybody. A.K.A. John Del Calo. Jacob Ferrimatera. Jeff Simmons. Welcome, boys. How are you, gentlemen? I'm good. How are you, friend? I'm great. I feel good. I'm, um... You look good. Thank you very much. I had a very nice day today. What'd you do, Mike? Uh, I worked out with my son. I take him with me to lift in the mornings. Nice. Ooh. And uh, he's cooking, man. I'm very proud of him. Nice. That's he's, awesome. He's doing dude. well. And then uh, I read up on a bunch of Tonight's Stinker. It's always like, it's always, uh, I feel like I'm always like up against uh, Father Time. Like, I'm being molested by Father Time at every fucking turn. What? Because there's always things like, here's the deal. <laughs> does it have anything to do with the <laughs> stinker no research? Idea. It does. Because uh, I'm usually done everything by Tuesday night. Okay. But then... I'll start going through like all the notes I have, and then I'm like, "All right, well, what about this?" And then it'll always lead down another rabbit mm-hmm. hole. And uh, I had this great book to use as reference, so I'm not going to show you who it is. Um, but I had a, a great book to use as reference, and then I found this fucking killer. I think it's like a six hour documentary on it, and it was just it reminded me of how terrifying this whole situation was. Uh huh. So, um, yeah. So that was my day. So you felt a little stressed watching a yeah. I had a very nice start to the day, and then I was fucking uh, cramming for the finals. Yeah, and uh, well, God I, bless you. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for cramming, fun. Mike. How about you, gentlemen? Just been baking in the hot sun like a baked potato. Yeah, you're down the beach, you little little bastard. Yeah, I'm got covered in sour cream. Ah, gross. Well, no. Well, well no. at least you won the contest. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember last week when I was talking about drinking on gout? Yeah, how'd you work uh, out? The next day, I couldn't walk, so. Oh. Taking a break. Gonna oh. take a break. Well, if you change your mind, they're there. Thank you. Would you ever use one of those wheelchairs where you put the one knee up? That does look cool. I certainly would. All right. I'll, I'll, in those instances, why you got one in your trunk? I, I can find one on Facebook Marketplace for you. Oh my God! Please don't. <laughs> you, I insist. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever use one of those wheelchairs that's pushed by a four hundred pound Jamaican woman? Yeah. Yeah. When my gout's at level nine, yes, I would. <laughs> I can't wait till I have to get one of those ladies. <laughs> I'm always going to be like, you're making me crazy. Every single day. Fucking ass. Yeah. I'm thinking multiple times a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to flip that coin to see if we're doing in a Practical Jokers episode? People are really clamoring for this. I know. So am I. I just watched a couple of episodes yesterday with yeah. my infant daughter, and man, we had a good time. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> Let me just get high real quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's some new episodes that I had not seen yet. <sighs> Father, forgive me. Can you believe that I had not seen these episodes yet? They had uh, Sal in a uh, challenge where... Oh, yeah. Sorry. I haven't flipped the coin yet, but I am going to talk about... I'm going to speak my piece. Uh, they had, like, very uh, expensive, rare Jordans, and he could either dump wine on the Jordans or wine on his mother... And he covered his mother in a bottle of wine. Oh man! And then Anthony Davis was the guest host this day, and they He's had a, a, he likes a uh, he likes the jokers. Oh, he likes some pranks. And they had a uh, the final step was they had a f- free throw contest, and this little kid won. And they said the prize was going to be the sneakers. So then they made Sal either give him the sneakers or take him away from the kid, and he took him away from the kid. Oh my god! <laughs> it was great, such great stuff. Anyway, I hope I get to talk. More about it today, you fucking piece of shit. You won again. Thank Ooh. you. That's all I want. Yeah, I know. You started looking at your phone three minutes into me talking about the fucking... <laughs> no, joke. listen, buddy, I'm still cramming. can't wait for the episode. <laughs> listen, I'm still cramming. There was something that I wanted to be sure of before I, um, I dove in headfirst to this. All right. I'm excited. Tonight's stinkers are the DC snipers. Snipers? Whoa. Jake, you have no idea what this is? It's no plural? It I was thought there was one team. guy. It was a father-son team. It was a father-son team? Right? Yeah. I thought it was yeah. just an older uh, veteran. And his and his boy. Uh, it wasn't technically his son. It was a young fellow who he had taken under his wing oh. and butt-fucked. Oh. No yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, so he was a daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't, I wasn't completely yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, so it was a 17-year-old boy and his daddy. What was oh, this, God. 2003, 2002? 2002, yeah. 
I remember it. I remember terrifying the time. Yeah, because we don't live too far from this. And Jake, uh, I'm stunned that you don't remember more about this. I remember the father. I I don't remember the father's side. I just remember the gas station thing. 2002. You were probably getting some fucking punani already. Yeah, I was. I was pretty. I wasn't paying attention to anything. I was pretty in it to win it at that point. (laughs) But yeah, just gas stations. I remember. I would always uh, just put the gas tank in the pump and then just. Duck. Sit in the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just dive, get up, dive again. Yeah. Get up, dive again. <laughs> this motherfucker's not getting me. You're at a different gas station by the time your pump's done. <laughs> I didn't know gas stations were doing this, but that, w- that was one of the spots where people were getting shot. There were 14 separate shootings, and 13 people were shot. And so, killed? Uh, 10 were killed. Er, all right. So 10, were, 10 killed, 3 wounded. So most of the people that were shot right. were wow. killed. And gas stations were a hot spot. And uh, one of the things that, that some gas stations would do is they would drop down these massive tarps. Really? You know how gas islands have those, those uh, roofs? Yeah. yeah. They would drop down massive tarps. I don't remember seeing that on the news. I Jesus just saw it, yeah, Christ, this past week. Horrifying, dude. Dude, there, there's, there's nowhere where anybody could have gone where they were safe. Like, yeah, it was a pretty widespread area, right? Yeah, and I didn't remember this, but a 13-year-old boy was killed going to school. Or I'm sorry, shot going to school. Yeah, he survived. But jeez. But I do remember that this. It was the first time that I remember like being scared of something that was currently happening, mm-hmm. and the, I guess like the closest thing to compare to that was uh, when the fucking um, the Boston bomber was on the loose. That mm-hmm. shit was super scary too. Yeah. I just remember back when that was happening, just because I had seen the jerk. And I was just like, man, if I was at one of these gas stations while this was happening, I'd be like, someone hates these cans. <laughs> that would have been fun to yell while someone was bleeding out. Uh, Jesus, Jake. <laughs> anywho, my condolences. Jake hasn't eaten yet today, I, so he's I, a little ornery. Yeah, I'm a little hangry. I'm firm is going to be acting up tonight. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, the jerk was on the other day, Jake. Yep. <laughs> I mean, jerk Matera. <laughs> but, yeah, there were two of them. Uh, one was was an older gentleman who was a veteran, uh, just crazy as the day is long. Hmm. Although I don't know that he was ever diagnosed with anything, which is odd. Did they diagnose him to death at least? Dude, he was he was put to death shortly after he was convicted. Really, it's one of the rare instances where I've seen somebody killed within, within a few like, years yeah. of being being convicted. Wow, um, was that like a special circumstance? Um, I feel like a lot of states had got done away with it at that point. Or maybe half the states don't have it. it was more not. states than you think have it. Yeah, and some that you think would have it don't have it. Uh-huh. Um, in regards to special circumstances, there is something weird in regards to the younger fellow's convictions. Mm-hmm. How old was the kid? He was, all right, so he was 15 when he linked up with um, the daddy figure. Yeah. Which his name was initially John Al- Allen Williams, and then he converted to, to Islam, and he became John Allen Muhammad, and that's how he's most popularly known. And they, the relationship started sexually? It didn't start sexually. Okay. But, dude, it, it, it gets fucking insane. Like, you think the shootings are the most insane part? Yeah. There's something that I want to tell you both so bad that I'm going to wait until a little bit later that when I read it, I almost jumped out of my fucking chair. Man. Like, it w- it turned me into Steve Harvey on Family Feud. Were you in your ejector seat? No. That's why it surprised <laughs> me so much. <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear it. So, all right. So, I'm, I'm going to start by popping off about John Allen Muhammad. So, he was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Have you two ever been down to that area? No. You seem like a, look like a guy that would tear it up. Down at Mardi Gras, Jake. I th- yeah, I think I would acclimate well down there. Mm. I've been to New Orleans. I'll bet you have. Uh, pissed the bed there once, <laughs> once or twice. Actually, I pissed one closet and pissed one bed both times. Two for two. <laughs> Man, Burpee Street really up. gets you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hurricanes. <laughs> Go back to sleep. It's Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> You ain't on the roof of the Superdome anymore, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to this awful Please. person, Jake. Yes. All right, so he was born December 31st, 1960 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I was going to call it beautiful. I've never been there. It does sound lovely, though, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, his parents were named Ernest and Eva. Okay. And they had five children. Unfortunately, Jake, uh, his mother passed away when he was three. Oof. 
he was taken in by relatives and they took good care of him. He was known around town as a good boy. Um, was not a good student. He did get in a little bit of trouble. Uh, I, I read this funny tidbit that said he loved pancakes. I was like, all right, cool. And then that led me to one thing. And that led me to find out that he once got in trouble for breaking into a neighbor's home as a teenager to make himself waffles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's not just pancakes. Okay. <laughs> this has been our most relatable stinker. So yet. he's also the breakfast bandit. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, also held a IHOP at gunpoint for some French toast. <laughs> yeah, so I'm on his side up to this point. Yeah. I think if there was any meal that I would kill over, it would be breakfast. Yeah. Good at any time. Yeah. I do love a, a pancake dessert. One one pancake at the end of the meal, mm-hmm. a little syrup on it. <laughs> that is breakfast dessert anyway. I could go on forever. <laughs> Before I move on, I just want to mention this. Uh, if she's watching, I apologize for this. I feel terrible. The place where I normally go for breakfast uh, with my wife, I, I wasn't as pleasant as I normally am because uh, my wife and I went there the other day, and I got a bit of bad news right as I was going in. Oh, no. So I was a little bit off, and uh, I feel like I might owe my waitress an apology because I wasn't as friendly as I normally am. Oh. Uh-huh. So if you're watching, uh, ma'am, whose name I don't know. <laughs> Do you know if she watches the podcast? I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming she does. <laughs> so, uh, Miss Lady at the Diner, I am sorry for not being as friendly as I normally am. I wasn't rude. I think it's ruder to admit that you've never learned her name in all this time. <laughs> Unbelievable. Someone you care enough about to apologize to. I just feel terrible because normally I, I like to look people in the eye and ask them how they're doing. Yeah, and you were a little and I was fucking glued to my having a phone. tantrum. I was just glued was it to my sad phone. news. I'm sorry. No, it was just, all right, here's what happened. So... A couple months ago, I went to that concert out in Ohio with my wife. Yeah. Along the way, I got two speeding tickets. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot about them, so I didn't pay them. Oh, yeah. So I got a letter on the 14th saying that uh, they're suspending my license on the 15th. (gasps) So I was like, oh, fuck. So I went and uh, I paid the ticket number that was on that that letter. And then as soon as I paid it, it's like, oh, because your license is already suspended. I was like, what? I was like, oh, I got two of them. So then I had to go and pay that as well. But I was just pissed off because it was something that I should have taken care of when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I let it go. And Certainly. I got to find out like how long my shit's suspended now. That sucks. So I'm riding a little dirty. Damn. That sucks. Uh, good thing to say to the cops on your free internet podcast. Uh, <laughs> Come and get me, you fucking animals. <laughs> Dude, you thought John L. Muhammad and, and Lee Malvo was tough to deal with? Woo! What's the other name? Come get me, boys. Uh, Lee Malvo. Lee Malvo? Lee uh, Boyd Malvo. I kind of like that name. You should have led cool. with that one. That's insane. Uh, Lee well, Boyd. we're getting to him. Like, okay, okay. He doesn't come in yet. He, he's a younger fellow. Oh, okay, that's a, that's a younger guy. So, yeah. I um, Still no reason to be rude to your waitress. I wasn't rude to her. It's just I wasn't as friendly as I normally am. <laughs> Is she a super friendly lady and... Pretty nice lady. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't yeah, know. It's, uh, I know you will think about it for a very long time, but I don't think you should. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> You know how I am. Like I, I she's not going to give you normal. any refills next time you go in there, Mike. Yeah, I, that's what I'm afraid of, Jake. All right, back to our murderer. So he was making waffle break-ins, uh-huh. and uh, he was a good little tennis player too. That's uh, something you don't hear about a lot of murderers. Yeah, he's a good little tennis player. And senior year of high school, he joined the National Guard. He ends up getting a little bit of trouble in the National Guard, even though. By most accounts, he was a good little boy. He started acting up in high school. What do you think he did in the National Guard when when he was a senior in high school? Mm. Spanking everyone with a paddle? He punched one of his superiors. Jesus Christ, they're not supposed to do that. Yeah, you're not supposed to crack them. (laughs) But he cracked them. In 1981, he falls in love, Jake. Okay. With a lady by the name of Carol Ann Keglier. Did he get kicked out of the guard? You kind of just went past that. No, he did finish his stint in the guard. He ends up joining the actual army okay. shortly thereafter. But he falls in love. And people were surprised because he had he had a relationship with a woman named Mildred up to that. And when he announced he was getting married, people were like, oh, congrats. He's like, no, it's not her. It's this woman named Carol Ann. Damn. With Carol Ann, he has a baby. What do you think they named this, this, this baby? Mildred. <laughs> this little boy. <laughs> I am Millie. They name him Lindbergh, an actual Lindbergh baby. <laughs> Come on. First name? Yeah. Yeah, Lindbergh Williams. <laughs> Is that a common name? Uh, for missing babies, maybe, yeah, but. 
<laughs> I don't think normal children. <laughs> but yeah, 1985, he ends up joining the regular ass army. And he is stationed in both uh, Tacoma, Washington, or included in this, in his stint in the army. Tacoma, Washington, uh, he goes to Germany. He got a little trouble in Germany, too. This is a big fucking deal. And he ends up, through all, all I'm about to tell you, he ends up getting an honorable discharge, which is fucking insane. While he's in Germany, they're doing a weapons count. And this is a fucking massive deal. One of the weapons goes unaccounted for. So an M16, nobody has any idea where it is. What? Word starts to circulate that uh, John Allen knows where it is. And he's one of the guys looking for it. And they pull him aside and they, they pester him enough as to where he's like, yeah, I hit it on the third floor. He was trying to get another soldier in trouble, which is an insane thing to fucking do. Yeah. Because like that could result in a court martial. Yeah. He doesn't get in much trouble for that. Wow. He ends up, um, he ends up taking part in um, Operation Desert Storm. While he's stationed in Saudi Arabia, he has beef with some other soldiers. And he takes an incendiary grenade, which when you pull the plug, it doesn't explode. It just creates an immense amount of heat. While they're sleeping, he pulls, he pulls the pin on the, on the incendiary grenade and he throws it in their fucking tent. Fortunately, nobody's seriously injured. And everybody knows it's him, but they just don't have the fucking evidence to prove that it's him that did this, even though they found the pin for the grenade in his tent. Jesus Christ. He just skipped the hand in the water cup. He could, Yes. Wow. <laughs> he could have went with, he could have led with that. He did not. He went with the fucking grenade, grenade in the tent. Do not invite Jesus him to my sleepovers. Christ. Got it. <laughs> and he was so difficult to deal with that even back in the States, he had a superior that he had enough of a beef with that this guy wrote his name on it. He's like, if it, and he, let, he wrote his name down on a piece of paper, put it in his wallet. He's like, if anything ever happens to me, I want people to know who did it. This is how many, like, awkward interactions and aggressive interactions he had with this guy. With all of this fucking said, he ends up getting an honorable discharge from the Army. Man, you're going to really fuck up. I don't know what you got to (laughs) do. So, during this time, he's married, um, or he ends up getting divorced from his first wife, Carol Ann. And uh, he has one baby with her. That's the Lindbergh baby. And he ends up getting married to his high school sweetheart, which is a lady named Mildred Green. And he has three kids with her, two girls and a boy. The boy's name is Lil John. I like what? that. <laughs> Lil John. Okay. <laughs> uh, that sounded more like um, Grover. <laughs> okay. That did not. Yeah, I like it, Jake. Thank you. Is yeah. he up? He's on. He's been yeah. practicing. Yeah, I've been uh, <laughs> moonlighting as a little John impersonator <laughs> at parties. And I just want to add that John Allen Muhammad had some issues with his first ex-wife, and he did not return his son when he was supposed to. So that's one of the things that ended up uh, contributing to their falling out. Was he? John Allen Muhammad while he was in the army? No, he was John Allen Williams. Okay. He later converts to Islam, and he actually um, converts to a, um, I think it's called a sect of Islam, the Nation of Islam, and he claims to have been working security at the Million Man March, but I guess whoa, if you're a black Muslim during that time, you there's no reason for you not to be there. Yeah. Were you there, Jake? I was not, sadly, but um, I had a dentist appointment that day. Uh, but you couldn't find a dentist in DC. <laughs> no, I could not. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm glad though. I'm glad. So, do you know if he has any affiliation with the Black uh, Brothers Inc. and the Black Muslims? He does Philly? not. No? And okay. it, dude, even uh, Louis Farrakhan refused to um, recognize him. Really? Yeah, because naturally, when they made that connection, they were asking, you know, as, as high up as they could. And yeah. I think uh, Farrakhan might have even denounced him. Wow. Was from like from big. all the from the stuff he did <laughs> excommunicated, yeah. yeah. Wasn't sure if it's from all that beef you were talking yeah. about. He actually snuck in the Farrakhan's house and made yeah. himself uh, some scrapple, <laughs> <laughs> which That's is the ultimate nation yeah. of Islam. <laughs> 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 oh, dude, could you imagine that if you're Louis Farrakhan, you're asleep and you smell the the sweet stink of scrapple? Oh my god! God damn! It's like getting your dick sucked while you're comatose. <laughs> I've always heard that about Scrapple. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been blown with a mouthful of Scrapple? <laughs> oh, 
Jesus. That's a little treat you can do too. <laughs> and why don't you add some syrup in the mix there, lady? <laughs> why don't you stick that thing up? Why don't you make it sticky? <laughs> Dude, that's the kind of task that would probably make an escort not be an escort anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or it might push her further into escortion or whatever they call it. Escortion. It's escortion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point all right he gets honorably discharged from the army he's like fuck i gotta do something to make money he ends up um he starts his own car mechanic business called express mechanic the idea is for him to come to your home and fix your car or ho- come to your work while you're working which sounds like a good idea but most car issues probably need to be taken to an actual fucking shop right and he realizes that and he <laughs> his business goes under <laughs> day one dude did he realize yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah fuck I'm gonna need this on a fucking lift it has 60 Shit. open tickets do you <laughs> have a lift by any chance <laughs> and uh, another funny thing that he ended up doing was in the mid to late 90s he ended up starting starting up his own karate studio whoa that's awesome which can you imagine like sending your kids to this fucking psychopath you don't even know what you don't know the extent of what he did. I'm sorry. I, I should have waited on that fact. No, I don't. Yeah, I, you said 13 out of 14 earlier, right? I did. Yeah. But the description is, is going to okay. Is gonna knock your diabetic socks off, Jake. I can only hope. <laughs> oh, my God. They're skin toned. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <sighs> they stink. Oh, my Lord. All right, so he's a traveling man. He, you, can, you can't keep him nailed down if you wanted to. Twice divorced. He's got four kids total. He loves his kids, though. You can watch video of him playing with his kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why, but you can see it. <laughs> I can imagine you watched a lot of it. <laughs> uh, he, he's, in the videos, he seems like a very good father. Hey, guys, he, thanks for he's... watching my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't forget to shoot out that fucking like and subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're, if you're just basing it off the videos, he seems like a very loving dad. Which in some cases I'm sure was true. Yeah. But when, when you hear the accounts of his interactions with his ex-wives, you get a much different picture of, of John Allen Muhammad. And before Millie, you said he was divorced twice. Like dishonorably divorced or honorably <laughs> divorced. That's, that's important too, to play in the fact. How do you think I would be divorced, Jake? How You would be divorced? Yeah. I think you deserve you would deserve a dishonorable, but you what? would get the honorable. You would get oh my the honorable. God. I think what would save you is you find the camera that you threw into a wall with, that you talked about forever ago. About I had some good stuff on that tape. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I threw my camcorder to the wall. There were two things on this tape that I wish I still had. One was a uh, a nice sex tape I made with my wife, <laughs> and the other one was a naked man walking down South Avenue in Seacane. I'll never, I'll never see yeah. that again. You had a handheld camcorder, John. This was by two, your side, brother. When, this was probably two thousand and three. He it, saw American Beauty once, dude. It was one of my favorite movies <laughs> yeah. before Sp- yeah. Spacey got popped, dude. Having this fucking camera in the car was the reason why I had this camera. And my wife and I were driving, and it was like, it was like this. This fat, naked, middle-aged man had been dropped from the heavens. <laughs> and he was just walking with a purpose down South, a- South Avenue. People were honking. Like, every- people were fucking cheering. Nobody knew what just to like do. Just like a fat Terminator. Dude, it was. <laughs> this was before, like, like, meth really hit this area. Like, uh-huh. now everybody recognizes meth behavior. Mm-hmm. But seeing this in, like, 2003, people were just like, dude, it was right by um, whatever fucking church is there. Our Lady of Fatima, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. It's like, dude. Buddy. Dude. Thank you. Nighttime or daytime? Daytime. Oh, my He's God. He's middle of the day. Pioneer. Yeah, man. Yeah. So those are two of the... just regular meth, is it, that does that to you? Yeah, it could. You smoke enough of it. It'll All make right. you crazy. All right. This guy knows. <laughs> <laughs> he might have just been a guy that needed to go for a walk, too. Uh, so those are two things I wish I could have gotten back. I don't know where I was, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. That I'll never have again, Jake. Thank you. <laughs> so John Allen Muhammad has a lot of time on his hands now. He's like, fuck, I got to make some fucking money. He ends up getting into the fake documentation business. What's that mean? Creating fake documents like passports and birth certificates. Oh, shit. Yeah, pretty heavy IDs duty shit. For yeah. like kids and stuff? Dude, the place where he sets up shop to conduct business is uh, in the Caribbean. 
Okay. And most of most of this happens on the island of Antigua. Are you familiar with Antigua? I've seen it written down before. I uh, this is something I learned about Antigua that uh, really put a smile on my face, and I wish I lived there. There's a place in Antigua called Piggots. Sounds like a slur you want to use, don't it? I already feel offended. <laughs> <laughs> So he gets into this, and uh, he also, um, he he's all over the Caribbean. So he makes his way to Jamaica, meeting all kinds of people, Jake. You know yeah. how it is when you travel. Does he got one dread? Probably does. Rated? Yeah, he got it done on the beach. <laughs> yeah. One of the, one of the people that he comes across uh, who's looking to secure some documents to come to America is this woman named Una James. Cool name. Uh, cool? Cool. Is Una. it a lady that you would be interested in with that name? Mm. Yeah. Una. Una, yeah. One James. <laughs> to rule them all. <laughs> Una is, um, I'm not going to beat her around the bush. She seems like a real motherfucker of a lady. <laughs> What's wrong with Una? What are you talking about? I don't like this lady. She was very mean to her to her little son. And her son is Lee Boyd Malvo. Whoa. They so, meet in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Whoa. And there was a an interaction that I read about with uh, Una and, at the time, her, her baby daddy, who was Lee's father. She got cracked by him. Oof. Okay, she's not bad for this. I fully support her in this. She got cracked by the baby daddy, and then she attacked him with a machete. Good for her. Yeah, good lady there. But she was uh, rough with her son, and she would also abandon him for weeks on end. Damn. So okay. this kid had severe abandonment issues because his dad leaves at one point and his mom just takes off and then she'll come back and just act like nothing happened. So this kid's looking for a father. The dad lived through the machete? He was in one piece? He did. Uh, He only uh, suffered a a slice on the wrist. Oh, man. Get my legs. (laughs) Across the room. I'm out of here. (laughs) And at one point, um, I saw an interview with uh, Lee Malvo's dad who they tracked down in Jamaica. And they were asking him about like interactions with Lee. He's like, "Yeah, I do feel." He's like, "I did leave." He's like, "But I actually I bumped into Lee at one point, dude." And uh, in this book, this is one of the uh, primary uh, resources I use. Uh, it's called uh, "Sniper" by Sari Horowitz and Michael Ruwain. They detail that interaction, and fucking uh, Lee Malvo was begging his dad to take him back. He's like, "Please, if you don't take me back, she's going to kill me with spankings." <laughs> Every man's dream right there, I think, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, Jake, you got to pay good money for that <laughs> <Yeah>. shit, man. <laughs> he was how old getting spanked like that? All right, so he left his mother when he was 15. So up to that, like, he was little he getting was spanked. 14. He was left with, uh, with ants a lot of the time. And uh, he had a lot of good people in his life, but his parents weren't two of them. So he's constantly on, on the lookout for, for parent figures to impress. The mom ends up getting her documentation to Florida. She sets up shop in Port Myers, Florida, and Lee initially goes with her. Now, during this time, John Allen Muhammad is bouncing around the United States. He's trying to track down his ex-wife. I think she's in Tacoma, Washington at this time with the three kids. Um, John Allen Muhammad eventually, all right, so he sets up shop at this Christian homeless center in Tacoma, Washington, and he's got his kids with him. However, in September, September 4, 2001, a week before the September 11th attacks, um, he gets found out. His wife, she has no idea where, where he is with the kids. So they're technically, they're supposed to be with their mom, but he just took them. So September 4, 2001, he gets busted, and he loses the kids to his ex-wife because he applied for welfare, and um, in, in running his information, they're like, oh, this sounds a lot like the guy who was, who's, Wanted for missing kids. Yeah. So they were able to make that connection. At some point, he ends up, he goes to Fort Myers, Florida, and he he lost his kids. He's like, fuck this shit. He's like, I'm going to have a kid one way or another. He knows Lee Malvo is not being taken care of by his mother. Mm-hmm. So he's like, just fucking come with me. So now Lee Malvo ends up out in Washington, and this is shortly after the September 11th attacks. In Octo- October 2001, John Al Muhammad brings Lee Malvo to this Christian mission that he was staying at with his kids previously. The kid shows up, and then the uh, director of the mission is a guy named Al Archer. He's like trying to learn a lot about this kid. He's like, something seemed very off. And keep in mind, the September 11th attacks just happened. And he asked Lee Boyd Malvo what, what he wants to be when he grows up. 
And Lee Mabba says, I want to go to flight school. Not be a pilot, but go to flight school. Yeah. Very odd thing to say. That is weird. Uh, Speaking of odd things, uh, they spent a lot of time at the YMCA together. They're also spotted coming out of the same shower. This is Lee Malvo and... And John Muhammad. So that was quick. Yeah. Yeah. Not long at all, really. Right. And it's so distracting. I'm sorry. He has a name like a Harry Potter villain, and it's driving Mm -hmm. me crazy. Malvo? Yeah. Lee Lee Malvo. Malvo. Yeah. (laughs) I mentioned that he had lost his kids. The day of the hearing, his ex-wife brought a friend with her, this woman named Isa Nichols. And the wife is deathly afraid of John Al-Muhammad. And Isa Nichols is afraid of John Al-Muhammad, too. They know he's just fucking unhinged. So on February 16th, I'm sorry. Yeah, February 16th, 2002, there's a knock at the door at Isa Nichols' house. Who do you think it is, Jake? Is it Muhammad? It's not. It's Lee Malvo. However, Isa Nichols doesn't answer. Her, um, I think it's her granddaughter answer, answers. This woman named uh, Kenya Cook. She answers. She's got a little baby upstairs sleeping. Kenya's oh. cooking dinner. She answers the door. Lee Malvo starts talking to her. And he talked to her for about three minutes. And then he shoots her in the head. Oh, my God. He kills her in her doorway. So, Isa Nichols just, she automatically assumes, like, that was supposed to be me. And it probably was. Like, turns out that John Al Muhammad told Lee Malvo just to kill anybody who opens the door. So, this woman, unfortunately, just happened to be the first one to answer the door. Jesus Christ. Now, over the next few months, there's a lot of murders. According to Lee Malvo, they killed over 40 people. Wow, so this is in addition to the... the not only, yeah, not okay. only the D.C. area shit, but they, they, they traveled okay. around, so... Is it is, was it true? Like are those I think claims? it is because everything that Lee Malvo says seems to check out. And uh, there were people that were killed that just there's no reason for them being dead. Like there were there was there were people killed on golf courses in Arizona and Clearwater, Florida. And Lee Malvo said one of the things they would do is like these people were essentially target practice for them. Jesus, yeah, because they're just out in the open. Yeah. Wow. So from February uh, through September. They're just driving around the country shooting people. And nobody's able to make the connection. One of the theories is that they were killing people to eventually include John Al Muhammad's ex wife to make it just seem like she was just a part of the randomness that they were killing. And not just because they knew if, like, she was the only person in her area, which he later finds out that she's living in the Maryland area. Yeah. If it was just her, they knew immediately who it would be. However, they were in the D.C. area by, like, April or May, right? Yeah, so September... All right, so they commit a murder September 5th in Maryland. Birthday. Oh, congrats, yeah, Jake. Thank you, yes. Pow, pow, pow. I, I can, that was not nice. You know what? I considered having a Nerf gun for this one, but I decided against it because I thought it would be in bad taste. Good, wise choice. Weird line you draw. <laughs> <laughs> Menendez Brothers... <laughs> this one no everyone can't stand their parents yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but dude yeah so September 5th that's the first Maryland uh, DC area shooting attributed to them he kills a so guy they go through the winter into the next yeah they do fall they, dude, they're just right? traveling around the country just yeah. shooting people at random September 5th I think this guy was a pizza shop owner uh, Paul uh, LaRuffo I think his name was Pizza Man, Jake. Yeah, Pizza, uh, pizza I get man, it, man. man. They shoot him, and um, September they they need reliable wheels that are going to fall under the radar. So they go up to Trenton, New Jersey. Where do you think they buy a car from, Jake? Gary Barbera, Sure Shot Auto Sales. Whoa, That's I know. <laughs> come the fuck come on, on, man. God damn, dude. They did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a lot of money, so they buy a car for two hundred and fifty bucks. It's a nineteen ninety blue Chevy Caprice. Okay, which is a uh, Chevy Caprice is a beautiful name for a woman. <laughs> you think so? I do. Yeah, I, do. I like that shift. one. Yeah, <laughs> she's actually the name of your waitress, Mike. <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> Chevy Caprice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you deserved a a, more, uh, a friendlier customer that day. <laughs> 
All right, so September 14th and 15th, there's two shootings in the Maryland area that are, uh, two people are wounded. They're attributed to them. September 21st, they, they've driven down south. They've driven down to Atlanta, and they, they, killed, uh, they killed somebody in a liquor store parking lot. With a sniper rifle or with a yes. handgun? So initially, all right, so I think the first murder, that woman, Kenya Cook, that was a handgun, but eventually they acquire a two twenty three Bushmaster rifle. So going from D.C. to Atlanta, then it wasn't connected. People aren't no, worried people about aren't, it being a spree killing. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's nuts to drive that distance just yeah. for the purpose of... But they're, he, they just wanted to cause chaos, which Yeah, most people got to go to fucking work. Does, <laughs> does this all have to do with like 9-11 and like the Islamophobia that followed that? I think the combination of this dude being unhinged, yeah. um, anti-Muslim sentiment being so high, and also... The 9-11 Muslim martyrs saying, like, all right, we're kicking, we're, 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 this is fucking jihad, baby. Yeah. Which is, uh, that was on the, a lot of their t-shirts. I think those factors contributed to this. Which I, how did TSA miss that, man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many were there? A baker's dozen of these fucking guys? <laughs> all in it's jihad, baby t-shirts, Jake? This whole time. <laughs> I mean. Well, I think we decided on our first merch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can go get that by going to uh, stinkers.com, <laughs> which isn't available yet. Um, Jeff, are we at a half hour yet? Okay. Now seems like a great time to thank our sponsor. So this episode of Little Stinkers is brought to you by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, use promo code STINKER, you get 20% off your order and free shipping. Have you guys utilize Manscaped yet? I have not. No, I'm a hairless wonder. <laughs> you, you see me dripped in Manscaped right now. I got a Manscaped t-shirt, a Manscaped underwear. Nice. I showered before you guys got here with Manscaped Body Wash, Manscaped Shampoo. First thing uh, I said was how good you smelled when I walked you. in. Thank you. I didn't want to tell you what I was using just because I wanted it to be a surprise for right now. What a great addition to the ad. I know, and I'm going to stand here like this <laughs> with my hands up. Do it. I want, I want more. But, dude, fucking Manscaped has... I love their stuff. Yeah. So whether it's like the T-shirts are super comfortable, the underwear is super comfortable, their male grooming po- products are incredible. Jake... If I didn't have Manscaped products to groom my body with, I would be I would be single in a fucking a fucking storage facility right now. Oh no! Yes, I would be illegally living in a fucking six by eight foot storage facility, not able to see my kids, just withering away. But thanks to the lawnmower 4.0, I have a wonderful family and I have a very nice life. You can have that, too, if you go to manscaped.com and use promo code STINKER. Again, 20% off whatever you order, and you get free shipping. That's a good deal. I that s- is a great deal. Listen, I, I, I pride myself on, uh, on um, my shaving etiquette. Yeah? Brother, I, I stay sure up. I was, I was jacking my meat today. More often than you get your hair cut? I do. Wow. <laughs> Lately, yes. Jesus Dude, Christ. I'm usually... I get more haircuts than pube cuts. Bro, I'm usually... One to two weeks on haircuts, but I've been getting a little lax with that this summer. But I've been religious about shaving my dong. And uh, one thing that I that I noticed today when I was cranking my meat was um, re- the last time I shaved my pubes, I was like, nah, I don't really like that dong hair because I got a little bit that rides up on the meat. On the, You know what I'm talking about, Jake? Yeah, I have a whole mane. I know what you mean. I got rid of that for the first time this oh, week. Oh, wow. Dude, it, it feels like I'm, I'm driving a fucking F1 race car now. All thanks to fucking Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com, promo code STINKER, 20% off your entire order, and free shipping. That sounds awesome. I don't think we have enough time for me to ask why that part of your penis had never been shaved before. Maybe next week. Um, If you really need to know, it's because um, it was that way when my grandfather died. Well, rest in peace. Rest in peace. (laughs) Rest in penis, (laughs) wreath. And we're back. <laughs> All right. So at this point, the the uh, 
the bad boy twins, they're driving down south, Jake. So they're mm-hmm. committing murders in Atlanta. In um, all right, September 21st, there's two women shot. One of them ends up dead. September 23rd, they drive to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and kill a woman there. So there's a woman, uh, an Asian woman, that's killed in a parking lot there. So they're all over the fucking place. And these are all, at this point, distance from the trunk. They are. So what they ended up doing, what had happened was... I remember this. I remember when they were caught, uh, if I may... Mm-hmm. Indulge you, Jake, since you since you were getting so much goddamn punani back then, you don't remember watching the fucking news. Could you imagine dripping in so much fucking booty that you didn't even see the news during the six months period? <laughs> they so what they did was they they rigged the trunk so they could shoot out the back of it without being seen. So it lay down like Breaking Bad, prostrate. Uh, no, no, no. It was them with the, their own rifle. Oh, they were shoot. Okay, yeah. So they would. Be taking aim, but no one could see Whoa. them. Yeah, so they could just have the car parked on a hill with a good view of wherever they were trying to shoot and be basically completely inconspicuous. Would, like, the barrel of the gun be, like, poking out just the back? Just, like, hardly. That's insane. Yeah. How, what about the scope? Like, did they have, like, a submarine kind of scope I thing? I think they had a submarine, yes. <laughs> Figured. There was a second hole. So, no, for real. Oh, okay. So there was a hole for the... um. For the barrel of the gun to come out. I'm sorry, I thought there was a submarine. Glory involved. hole was the second. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so it was kind of like a uh, a triangular hole. So the bottom part was for the tip of the gun to come out, tip of the rifle, and then the top part was for the um, the uh, the scope. scope. You could like, okay. I guess, barely see the crosshairs, you know, through this wow. tiny fucking hole. So these were all, all just random people. It wasn't like they didn't, had a, didn't have a target. Except for that, what, first lady, right? Was the only target, like, specific? Yeah, she was the only one that was specifically targeted, only because of the connection to his ex-wife. Out of a possible 40 is what he said. Yeah. Wow. It's fucking crazy. I had no idea the extent. I thought it was, like, 12 or 13, like we Dude, said. There's so much. I mean, eventually, when Lee, when they get caught, Lee Malvo, initially, he's, his allegiance is still with John Allen Muhammad. Brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see it too. He's a very intelligent kid. And uh, I could definitely see that happening. But at the same time, like, this motherfucker is cold blooded too. Because, mm-hmm. all right. So, according to Lee Malvo, all right. So, there were 14 shootings between October 2nd and October 22nd in the DC area. So, it was like three weeks of just fucking absolute panic. In yeah. the area where nobody knew where anything was coming from. Really? I thought I remember being at baseball practice when it was like in March or April. No, it was October. Was I at football practice? I thought I quit football back then. Just, I'm sorry, guys. Give me a <laughs> maybe five uh, minute period to think silently. Maybe that's when they found them. Maybe that's no, when they we found them. Like, they found them in October, too. What the fuck? I remember people just falling down at baseball practice and somebody yelling, Sniper. Maybe it was just because it had already yeah. happened. Here, I'll show you the... Uh... Yeah, prove it to me. <laughs> prove it to me in, in ink and paper instead of <laughs> fucking uh, Google. Please don't shuffle through the book on a podcast. <laughs> <Here, laughs> <here, laughs> October 2nd, October 22nd. There were 14 shootings. He's right. Wow. 14 shootings in the D.C. area during this time, Jake. 13 people were shot. 10 were killed. You know why there was 14 shootings and 13 people shot? They missed one person? They missed one. The very, so the very first shooting, which kicked off this specific spree, uh, they, they shot through a Michael's Arts and Crafts store. So people could tell that a bullet came through. I think they just hit. missed. Because they ended up killing somebody shortly thereafter. Damn. So uh, they were apparently aiming for a cashier. <clears throat> one would act as the lookout, and the other one would be laying... Uh, prone in the trunk and there's no way anybody would ever fucking think this was a thing where, do you know where he would be as a lookout like close to the car or like uh, standing on the roof with binoculars <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one <laughs> in full riot gear ready just- <laughs> aim <laughs> I can't believe it took him so long to get caught no. if that was the case <laughs> no he'd be they Depending on who was shooting and who was the lookout, they they were in the car together. So the older guy, he's military trained. This young kid just picks up fucking sniping, like, and is good at it. 
he would take him to the shooting range. There was uh-huh. a shooting club in Tacoma that he would take him to. And when Lee Malvo would not shoot well, John Muhammad would make him do push-ups and or run around the building. Damn. So this kid was getting a lot of practice, and, like, when you want to please a man, you get good. <laughs> man, I saw that on a bumper sticker in Rehoboth Beach last week. That's another T-shirt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we have? It's jihad, baby. <laughs> and if you want to please a man, get, you yeah, get I think, good. I think one's on the front, one's on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the front's John Al Muhammad on the back. It's Lee Malvo. <laughs> yeah, on the front, you walk by, you walk past somebody, and they say, "If you want to please a man, you get good." And then when you walk past him, <laughs> and they look at the back. This is jihad, baby. <laughs> yeah. That that man is Allah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, dude, we need we need a t shirt press, man. Uh, It's great. Yeah, you want to get stupid? No, no, thank you. Okay, talk for a second while I open another non alcoholic beer. There you go. I thought you were getting stupid, bro. You always get you always get silly in here. Slightly stupid. That's a you ever want you ever listen to that band? No, No, what are they? Reggae? Yeah. No, it's, no, that's... Oh, I always thought it was like Slipknot for uh, special needs people. I'm thinking of Mushroom Head. My bad. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mushroom Head. <laughs> Slipknot for, <laughs> for special needs people. Back to the snipings. Please. So it was a three-week reign of terror. Now, informations... There's, there's thousands upon thousands of tips... And one of the common tips that they receive is that people are spotting white box trucks near these shootings. That was the first bit of information that they shared with the public is that they're looking out for white box trucks. Mm-hmm. And people just who just happen to be driving these fucking things were getting pulled over all, all over the place, Jake. Wow. This is so crazy because you have a box truck with bullet holes right outside. <laughs> I do. Is that what sparked this episode? Subconsciously, it might have. Yeah. I don't think Jake knows what a box truck is, but we won't explain That's a work it van. Now, oh, but, yeah. that's a work a van. Work, okay. Work. Yeah. yeah. We'll right. bring it to him easy later. I've got okay. soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, you start, if you if somebody's like, oh, it's a white box truck, you see them everywhere because they are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not an uncommon yeah. thing, you know what I mean? So that's like kind of a tough you're going to be scared at every gas station you go to if you're right. looking for a white box truck, mm-hmm. you know. And th- I mean, this was so terrifying because people, this was happening, these shootings were happening at gas stations. They were happening in parking lots. There was a woman who was sitting on a bench out, outside of a store in a strip mall. And people thought that she shot herself because it was so sudden and it was so, she was just sitting there. Then all of a sudden, you know, damn, there's a bloody mess. And the 911 call for that later, they're like, yeah, a lady just shot herself on the bench. And then when they got there, they're like, oh, no, this this woman, this is clearly the sniper. Damn. And then I mentioned uh, there was a 13-year-old boy who got shot. Dude, this was so fucked up for a number of reasons, but this shit pissed me off. So this boy, uh, I think his name was Iran Brown. Very cool name. He was He was driven to school this day. And he was shot as soon as he was dropped. As soon as he got out of the car, he got shot. The only reason why he wasn't taking the bus, he was suspended from taking the bus. Why do you think he was suspended from riding the bus? Farted on the driver's shoulder. They suspended this kid for eating candy on the bus. What the fuck? I know. Oh, my God. God Somebody's damn. Somebody's got to be pretty guilty on that one. Yeah. I would have been kicked out of school, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it's Wonka. <laughs> Dude, and unfortunately, uh, there's a, another great resource that I use for this is um, is a Vice documentary called I Sniper. And it's it's eight parts, and each part's like 45 minutes long. Jesus. And one of the great aspects of the documentary is they give like so many firsthand accounts. And some of the firsthand accounts come from that boy who's now a grown man. Like th- they, they have him meet the two surgeons who helped save him. It's a really lovely moment. That's cool. And... Um, one of the scarier aspects of the documentary is that they play a lot of the 911 calls. Like, people just don't know what's happening. There was a landscaper that was shot on, while he was pushing a lawnmower, and people were just like, yeah, his fucking lawnmower blew up on him. Like, nobody, nobody knew what the fuck was going on. Yeah. 
So this this is going on for weeks now. Uh, we get October nineteenth. There's a break in the case. Um, there's police. There, there's a shooting in the parking lot of Ponderosa. Damn, there were still Ponderosas back then. I know, buddy. That's so recently. The Bonanza by me closed in the fucking nineties. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> So while police are, are canvassing the area looking for any kind of evidence that these fuckers left behind, they, found, they find this, um, this clear white packet tacked to a tree. And inside of it is a tarot card and a note. And on the tarot card and the note, it says, For you, Mr. Police, call me God. Do not release to the press. We have tried to contact you to start negotiation, but the incompetence of your forces in, in Montgomery Police Officer Derek at 240-773-5000 Friday, Rockville Police Department, female officer, in quotes, task force, FBI, female, in quotes, priest at Ashland, Washington, D.C. These people took calls for a hoax or a joke, so your failure to respond has cost you five lives. If stopping the killing is more important than catching us now, then you will accept our demand, which are non-negotiable. This is what they wanted. What do you think they want to stop the killing? Unlimited power card at Dave and Buster's. I, I'm assuming uh, g- gay marriage to be legalized. They they are porking at this point. Yeah. And dude, uh, all right, before I tell you what they wanted, um, Lee Malvo talks about how exciting the sex was after they would shoot somebody. I know. It should already be exciting. It's gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Damn, how exciting like, do you need gay like sex HBO to be? HBO slogan right there. <laughs> it's already exciting. <laughs> you do Damn. not need to spice up gay Dude, sex. That's how you can tell one. At least one of these guys is not gay. It's like, oh yeah, it was super exciting gay sex. It's like, <laughs> brother, if you had to ask if gay sex is exciting, you can't afford it. <laughs> where was that note found? This was found tacked to a tree. From where, like, around where they shot from? Yes. So after they figured out the trajectory, they went to that spot yep. and found it. Okay. Yep. So they wow. had plenty of time to get out of there. They, they also leave behind evidence, too. The one other piece of evidence they left behind was the manual for the Bushmaster rifle. And it had Lee Malvo's fingerprints all over it. Hmm. However, because he was a Jamaican citizen... Th- there was no match. There well, was. I mean, it wouldn't be a match if he had never been in the system at all. Right, yeah, 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 so. Citizenship has nothing to do with that, Mike. All right, well, he was never arrested in the United States, okay? And Jamaicans don't have fingerprints. <laughs> exactly what I was trying to get him to not say. <laughs> <laughs> what about bullet casings? Did they, I guess because they shot inside the car, they just kept all the casings for the, the rounds? Yeah, that, I guess they just ended up in the trunk. It's on the mantle? Yeah. So what they would do is they would take out, they would flip the seat down, remove the firewall, yeah, and just slide in. Damn. I'm talking about the gay sex, Jake. Okay. <laughs> For the shootings. Oh, the firewall. <laughs> <laughs> that pesky gay sex firewall. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mail inside of you. That's that's McAfee. Uh, I just wanted to know about the bullets. Gay virus <laughs> software. <laughs> but yeah, man, I don't know where the, where the, where the shells what ended they up to. Kept them as trophies, you know. Are they available on eBay? What's going on? Yeah, what are you trying to do, man? You want to wear a fucking bullet casing around your neck, you pervert? No, no. You've already got a wreath of dog penises there, man. <laughs> You're gonna look like a psychopath with a. I do have a, a bottle of it. It's a 50 caliber bullet. That's oh, that's cool. Fun, yeah. That is a sniper rifle too. Yeah. Is that what they used? Fifty caliber? This is um I think this is often used for hunting. Okay. No, it wasn't oh, fifty caliber. Ramming. Okay. The caliber of the bullet was uh two twenty three. Oh. Which I think is it seems as though all right, when I looked it up to to see how powerful that was, the cons- not the consensus, but most of what I saw um is that what consensus means, or does that mean all of them? <clears throat> Go on. <laughs> Most of what I saw said that the the caliber of bullet really doesn't matter. It all depends on the shooter. Okay. So even though it might not be that powerful of a round to one person, if you know what the fuck to do with it, yeah. yeah. If you know where to put it, 
Yeah. And he's talking about the gay sex. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Where was I, Jake? You know, I, I, I think no. we had just uh, We've finished been... <laughs> the letter before we got derailed. Transported okay. back to Dog Penis Island. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening to the episode the podcast for the first time, if you're a brand new listener, well, last week's episode is going to be a a must a must see or hear. Just listen to it. We'll take you. We'll take you to a faraway land. So they want ten million dollars put into a Bank of America account. They give the account number. Uh, they give the PIN number. They give the activation <laughs> date, the expiration date, and isn't then, that traceable? Dude, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, offshore account. They could freeze whatever money they put yeah, in. Yeah, but on top of this too, they say they want unlimited withdrawal at any ATM. That's it. Like no five hundred dollar cap, you mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. They want to be able to take out a hundred thousand dollars at one so time. Great. My God, they're so stupid. We want you to change the amounts in the fast cash options. Also, don't trace us when we take out <laughs> unlimited amounts from our <laughs> Bank of America account. <laughs> what name would you like on the account? <laughs> can you provide gloves so we can conceal our Jamaican <laughs> fingerprints, please? Man, that is a. Uh, Pretty fucking stupid. Right. So, oh, dude. So Two large pizzas. <laughs> did I, I'm assuming they didn't have access to the internet at this point because it seems like something you could very Those easily two, no. find out that it was well, not possible. Well, that's a great point. And related to that, when the police finally found out what car they were using, they had no idea the police were looking for them because they were just that unplugged. Yeah. I'm talking about the gay sex. <laughs> 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 Maybe on the front of the shirt it says I'm talking about the gay sex And on the back it says It's jihad baby <laughs> <laughs> That might go over well So that was October 19th They found that on October 19th On October 22nd This is their last murder They end up killing a bus driver So the guy was just starting his route for the day He was shot inside of his bus that sucks. Yeah, I know. From the trunk again. Yes. Yeah. Actually, this one might have been from uh, from the tree line. So some of them, they got out of the car to shoot these people, but many of them, they just did from within the parking lot. And one of the ironic things about uh, shooting from the tree line is um, that's part of how they were caught. They snuck up on them from the tree line. Uh, bef- like while they were trying their next attempt? They were sleeping when they were caught. <clears throat> In... In the trees? What do you mean? I'll get to that. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, they're getting, I mean, they're about to get caught, right? That was their last they murder, are. and they were in the middle of a fucking spree spree. That was October 22nd. I don't think they took more than three days off during this spree. Mm-hmm. There were days where there were multiple shootings, and Lee Malvo said at one point that their goal was to shoot six people a day, which in fucking D.C. traffic, good luck, buddy. That's ambitious. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, that's how you know you're dealing with a lunatic. What are they on? Mark Wahlberg's sleep schedule? Jesus Christ, <laughs> what time are you getting up? <laughs> Staying prayed up, baby. <laughs> they were arrested in municipal sweatsuits. <laughs> <laughs> how they could afford them, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, how were they uh, paying for gas, anything? Like, where was the money coming from? There were some robberies. So, especially early on, like, when they were committing murders down south... And what, at least one of the Maryland murders, they stole money from the people. Uh, the first Maryland murder, I believe it was, the pizza shop guy, he was carrying out a bag of money and his laptop, and they stole that. And they didn't eat much while they were out. Well, that's going to be helpful for the gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know about that, right? You don't eat before you're going to have gay sex. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I was always uh, hesitant to let my wife dig around in there. Because you've always just eaten? <laughs> because I've always had gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because I don't want to go through the whole rigmarole, have it clean that thing out, and just... Oh, man. Just... I don't want any... It's a no-go zone. Let sleeping yeah. dogs lie. Mm-hmm. Jake, October 24th. Uh-huh. All right. Now, the entire area knows. So they're able to figure out... All right, not only what kind of car they're looking for, 
but they get they get two names. They get the names John Al Muhammad and Lee Lee Malvo. How'd that happen? So what had happened was, um, one of John Al Muhammad's friends, I think his name was Bill Dancy, a guy from Tacoma, Washington. He said that he had a feeling that these were the two doing it, and there was a point where he's just like, I think it was when I think it was when they shot the kid where he was like, he called the FBI and he's like, look, I think I know who did this. And eventually they don't believe him. He just had a gut feeling. He had a feeling it was yeah. them. He hadn't heard from them in a while. They, they stayed with him for a little bit. Yeah. And one of the things that ended up confirming that it was them was one, when they were staying with this guy, Bill, they had just gotten the, uh, the rifle and they were shooting it into a stump in his yard. So the FBI came and they were trying not to make a big deal about this. The FBI got there, and they dug up the stump, and they were able to retrieve some of the rounds that were fired into it that day. They matched it with ballistic tests from some of the um, bullets retrieved from the victims and determined it was from the same weapon. Wow. So that all happened pretty quickly. It did, yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. It is. That is pretty... Well, yeah, that's impressive. All right, there's some stuff that going to leave you scratching your head in a little bit. And what did, what did you mean? Like, they... Uh, Bill told them this information about them shooting the stump. Yes. But you said they were trying not to make a big deal about it to Bill? No, because they didn't, they didn't want to tip the press off. Okay. So, at this point, um, only the authorities know the car and the names? Yes. And they're trying to keep it from the press. Yep. So, and, the, the killers don't find out. Right. Yeah. And the reason why they were able to find out Lee Malvo's name, too, is because they got information from his friend Bill uh, Dancy. I think the guy's name is... Um, told them where he was from, and they had the fingerprints from the um, the rifle booklet, mm -hmm. but they couldn't match it to anything. However, um, he got he was taken into an immigration office at one point when his mother came looking for him, and he was briefly reunited with his mother, and then he took off, and he ended up with with John Al Muhammad again. So from his time in that immigration office, and they didn't typically do this, they fingerprinted him, which wasn't standard procedure because he was a kid. They did it anyway. And because they did it, they were able to match those fingerprints when they had a name to just see if it matched up, to match those fingerprints with the ones found on the Bushmaster um, booklet. Right. When we kind of glossed over that earlier, that they just left that behind. Like, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, yeah. It's moronic. And it's, God it was, damn. It was it just, just laying in the grass when they right? found it. Yeah. No, that was not on purpose. You don't think so? No. As not a message? leaving with fingerprints. There was no fingerprints on that letter, I assume, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. Is that unconstitutional then? Because they got the fingerprints and he was a minor? Um, no constitution when you're fucking sniping people from the back of buddy, the Buddy, it's, it's, it's funny you bring that up because there is some, uh, um, some stuff that's rendered unconstitutional, which leads to some questionability in his uh, convictions later on. Okay. Yeah, I don't think anybody has a real issue with that. Buddy. Yeah. Like, You'd There's a lot surprised. of equal justice foundations out there who do good, but also there are some people that they, are trying because to... Because they have to yeah. stay on the same side of... Well, even they should take a back seat on this kind of shit. Jake, I'll ask you because you're a kind soul because I'm, I'm never going to stop thinking about this now. Does consensus mean most people agree with it or everybody does? Am I confusing con consensus with unanimous? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, consensus is, is most. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for answering my question politely. You are a whole once again. Thank you. <laughs> I've been knowing words. <laughs> um, all right. So at this point, they have two names to go off of, and they have the car. And they know that the weapon is... Yes. Yeah. And it was a... Reg it, it's his weapon. Well, the car was a Chevy... Chevy Caprice uh, oh. 1990. They're able to, to find out that he bought it in Trenton. They found out he paid 250 bucks for it. Awesome. Killer deal. I mean, they took that thing to Atlanta and back. No, man. It's worth it God damn. There. God, jeez. Also, don't make him like they used to. John, keep in mind, he's a mechanic, too. All right. Oh, so, that's right. So. Yeah. Souped yeah. it up. He but, pimped that ride. But we'll give uh, we'll give Sure Shot a little free press. Sure Shot. <laughs> we should, I wonder if they got shirts. We should go up there and get some shirts. Oh, God. And then uh, not wear them. Why don't we trade them our new T-shirt <laughs> for a short shot T-shirt? Yeah, we'll do a pin trade. It's jihad, baby. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, soccer players do after the game. <laughs> but dude, so now everybody's on the lookout for this blue Chevy Caprice. However, John Al Muhammad and Lee Malvo have no idea what the fuck's going on. 
They're just chilling. It's October 24th. There's a rest stop in uh, in Maryland. All right, it's... Uh, fuck, I can't remember the name of this place, but it's um, off of Interstate 70, and it's it's northwest of Baltimore. And okay. it's not far from the Pennsylvania-Maryland state Elton? line. No. No. Not Bethesda. It's near a place with an H. I'm feeling an H, Jake. Havertown? Yeah, it might be... Uh, or Hagertown? H- something Hagertown, like that. Hagertown, that's a popular one, yeah. I do know it's, it's northwest of Baltimore, and it is close to the PA-Maryland state border. Yeah, and it, I'm... It's relatively close. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy who just happens to pull off into that rest stop, and he know, he's aware that this is what police are looking for. And How does he know? Because every, everybody in this area knows, except for the two killers. Damn. This wasn't from the news, though, right? Yeah. Oh, it was massive news. It they, was. They eventually did put the car model on the they news? They eventually did put this information out there. Holy shit. Because they yeah. knew it was these guys, and they knew that this is what the they were driving. Blue Chevy consensus. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they were too busy yeah. uh, getting it on to watch the news. In the Chevy consensus, it's not a key start. It's like you just have to like blow into it, and it reads your IQ. It's like if you're a 69 or below, it starts. So the killers have no idea that people are looking for them. So they're parked uh, in a space that backs up to the tree line at this rest stop. And this guy, uh, Bill Dunahue, I think is his name, he pulls into the rest stop and it immediately it catches his eye. And he's like, uh, that's, I think that's the car. Man, it's got to be so fucking creepy. Dude, it gets even fucking scarier. So in I Sniper, which was a great documentary, they kind of like gloss over this. But in this fucking book, Sniper... They give a detailed account of how this unfolded. And I was on the edge of my seat reading this fucking shit. So, edge of his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he calls 911 at 1230. He's like, look, I really, he's like, I'm, I'm sitting in the parking lot at the rest stop at I-70. I forget whether it was north or southbound. And he's like, this is the car that they're looking for. And the 911 lady's like, are you sure it's the car? He's like, it's a blue Chevy Caprice. And he's like, uh... He's like, I, I think, I don't want to look because I could see there's two guys in there. He's like, I think they're sleeping. The side windows are tinted. So he's almost facing, all, facing directly yeah. at them. <laughs> he's like, I, th- I think the license plate matches. She's like, can you get out of your car and go check? My God. I know, dude. dude. This guy wow. does it, though. This guy gets out of his van. He does it. He gets out of his van, and uh, he's acting like he's checking the tire pressure on his own tires, but he's, like, looking out of the side of his eye, and he gets confirmation that the license plate is the license plate they're looking for. An insane thing to tell somebody to fucking Just the cops, I know. Wait a minute. Maybe they can fucking sort it out. But this is probably your guy. He makes this call at 1230. They weren't arrested until 330. What? So, all right. The way the way that this happens is eventually they start rounding up state troopers. And rather than than go screaming in there, they just start blocking off the exits of this of the uh the rest stop. Uh-huh. From there they're also blocking all north and southbound traffic on Interstate seventy. Okay. Cause Damn. It does make sense, but at the same time, like I wonder how many were actually just on the scene just in case because there are civilians there. It's yeah. not just this guy in the parking lot. There are truckers. The police actually asked two of the truckers to use their rigs to help Lock. block off the exits. Oh, my God. Are they not letting people leave either? Because I feel like that could cause weirdness if they see, like, cars not able to get out, you know? Buddy. That's got to be unsettling. You're at a rest stop, though, and you hear the roar of the highway right next to you. And, and then all that of a sudden just this- stops? Yeah. Yeah. Buddy. To add to that, I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to add this point. All right, before, um, all right, so before he's able to get confirmation of the license plate, there's a guy walking past, and um, he's like, he, he, while he's on the phone with nine one, he's like, "Buddy, I can't tell you why I'm asking you to do this, but when you get in your car and you drive past that blue Chevy Caprice." Can you just verify that the license plate is this number? And if it is, just tap your horn as you're driving out. He says, as the guy drove past, the guy laid on the fucking horn to tell him that, like, yes, this is the, oh. the license plate. <laughs> Dude, that's straight out of fucking horrible bosses. Charlie Day does that. <laughs> 
<laughs> the worst private detective. And he's the only motherfucker in the area that doesn't know about the blue caprice. I like, guess, man. He's been waiting to hit that horn all day. <laughs> <laughs> Finally get to try my new horn. It's like... Burn, 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 burn. So this is probably at a time before they were able... <laughs> this <laughs> novelty <laughs> horn. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as a tap on this thing. <laughs> is that the Mexican hat dance? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that wakes them up is the Mexican hat dance. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but dude, uh, I mean, what sound sleepers? They sleep through the fucking dude laying on the goddamn horn. Probably goes in the dream, you know. They yeah. were like, I had a dream that hung their horns at us. So, st- more and more state troopers start showing up, and uh, they call SWAT. The SWAT team is going to be the ones to that execute the arrest. At three thirty. They finally move in to arrest these guys. So I think there were there were twelve SWAT members that, that came out of the tree line, and they just smashed out the windows, and they took him out. Lee Malvo was in the pulled front. him out through broken windows. No, so they were able to. All right, so they had a, the doors were locked, so they had to like reach in to open the doors. Uh-huh. Lee Malvo was in the driver's seat, and John or no, Lee Malvo was in the uh, back seat, and he was laying facing top the top or bottom. <laughs> Clearly bottom, dude. Car seat. And uh, John Al Muhammad was in the driver's seat. I may have that mixed up, so don't quote me on that. But they are able to arrest them, and the whole whole process takes about 30 seconds. They didn't put up a fight. So they bring them in, and initially Lee Malvo is sticking with John Muhammad. John, Mah- John Muhammad claims that he's being framed. The whole thing is just the government trying to fucking railroad him. Damn. But they're separated at this point. They right? are separated. So does okay. Lee Malvo, was he trained to... Um, Say this kind of stuff. I would imagine. As well, so. like, yeah. Like, oh, we're being framed, that kind of well, shit. Dude, that, that's a great question because they were, they were questioned. I think it was when Lee Malvo was brought into immigration. I think they caught them at the Y. And the immigration guy asked Lee Malvo if he was with John Muhammad, and he said yes. And John Muhammad just didn't say anything. So I think after that, he knew, they probably had a talking to that, like, don't you're not with me yeah. you don't know anything you don't do anything mm-hmm. but he was he was talking a lot he wasn't he wasn't saying anything incriminating because um they were just denying everything initially and lee malvo made some pretty scary jihad related drawings that are available on the internet they're actually decent <clears throat> <laughs> i i know muslim drawings are a big no-no but he was doing it, and they were pretty good. I think only if you draw Muhammad, they're allowed to be artists. Uh, I, I <laughs> couldn't tell you who was Muhammad and who wasn't in this. I'll have to look it up. No, but it was Muslim oh. figures. Oh, wow. Not bad. Pencil See, work. They're, they're clearly Muslim dudes, but yeah. I don't know if that's Muhammad or not. It's a comic book? Um, oh, that is Saddam Hussein. Yeah, that's a good one. And he's having gay sex with Muhammad? <laughs> <laughs> that guy was not supposed to draw Dude, that. Do you think like when you're having gay sex in a Chevy Caprice, like all the <laughs> all these like gay Muslim figures from history start assembling? <laughs> you see <laughs> you see swirls on your rear. <laughs> John Muhammad. Some things like that probably. On happen. your rear, John Muhammad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think they would is that encouragement from these? I think it was. Uh, yeah. Muslim figure yeah. ghosts? Yeah. It doesn't seem like they would encourage that kind of behavior. You can from the afterlife. Uh, Objects okay. behind like, you are bigger than they appear. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking gay yeah. sex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they all show up. Even guys you thought were dead before. You know. I think they were all dead. <laughs> no, well, I'm talking about you, you think they're dead, but they show up. You remember how Spidey showed up and everybody thought he was dead, but he wasn't? No. Spidey? You're, I'm talking about the Avengers assembling. Uh, I, I never Since saw when? <laughs> <laughs> the whole episode you have been? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Spidey is the DC sniper? Yes. No more metaphors this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you can't eat porker. <laughs> Fine, one last pun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll stop now. 
Oh, but the DC dude. Universe. Oh, fuck, they're Marvel. Whoa. God damn it. Yeah. Oh, Jake. I, I so was close. with you, though. I was with you, man. Yeah, when are they going to put the snipers in the Justice League movie? <laughs> are they in the DC Universe? <laughs> I mean, they let the Flash get away with a lot. <laughs> in your trunk, Hulk. <laughs> but, dude, the... Um, yeah, the trials were a big shit show. So they, were tri- they weren't tried for every murder. So they were tried in both Maryland and Virginia. Okay, and I, I believe the Virginia convictions came first and then the Maryland convictions. And John Muhammad, he was sentenced to death. He was convicted of murder. And also there was a, a capital offense, which was um, committing multiple murders within a three-year span as a capital offense. They were both convicted of that in addition to being convicted of actual murders. One of the, I don't, I don't know how much this played into maybe um, more urgency being put on the case, but one of the, one of the later victims was a woman who worked as an FBI analyst. Really? Yeah. Did they try Malvo as a youth? Or an no. Adult? Oh, boy, that's a great point. He was 15 when he got caught? He was Jamaican. 17 when he got caught. Okay. It was Jamaican. Yeah. That's how yeah. he was tried. Um, start from the beginning. Okay. I'll, I'll just save it for Jake's corner. So, no, he was not. Uh, although he was Jamaican, he should have been eligible for the dreath penalty. Thanks, man. I feel Dreads. like I joined a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> dreath? Dreads. Oh, dude. Dread no. dead. Uh, Dread. No. Yeah, that, was, that was a stretch. Uh it's more it. offensive than me having dreadlocks. <laughs> That's more offensive than you drawing an actual Muhammad cartoon during this podcast, man. Is that what's on your shirt? <laughs> that would be a fun podcast. Maybe we could start a new Patreon where we just draw... Uh, no. No. All right. No. No. We won't do that. But uh, relative to one of your questions um, about him being underage... Yeah. Uh, he was 17 when he was caught. So... He was 17, and if, uh, I think his birthday, fuck, when was his fucking birthday? I think it was maybe February. So it wasn't too far off. If they had, Not that you want him to go on killing people for another fucking four months, but at the same time, you know, he probably would have gotten a death penalty then. So because he was convicted for crimes that he committed when he was 17, he was initially sentenced to, to life without the possibility of parole. Mm-hmm. In 2012, the Supreme Court ruled that sentencing... Uh, juveniles to life without parole was cruel and unusual punishment. Nope. Dog, I'm with you. So he had to be resentenced. And dude, I don't know that he has been resentenced yet, but because of another law, a state law in uh, Virginia, or wait, maybe it's, Mar- fuck, I have my hands mixed up. All right, so the Virginia governor. So he he's he's currently in prison in Virginia, and he would have to stop serving his sentences in Virginia before he can start serving the Maryland ones. So there was a a Virginia state law which stated that um, anybody who's sentenced to life without parole will be eligible for parole after 20 years. So 20 years was 2022. He came up for parole, and he was naturally denied parole. So he had one shot. They can do forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. And I think he's 37 now. So he's already served 20 really? years? I know, really? man. So it's kind of spooky. He's also gotten married. He married a, a wealthy liberal woman. A uh, cur? Mm-hmm. A beard, as we would say. I don't know, You think man. he's not gay anymore? I don't know, man. I, he I, went to jail and became straight? <laughs> wow, that's that's what the Scared Straight program is, right? <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> Yeah, more like scared gay up in this motherfucker. Y'all be fucking each other. <laughs> Dude, the first time I saw that show, that was amazing. I think they showed it to us in school. What is it, Scared Straight? I think they showed it in schools before it was on TV. I thought we were talking about Avengers. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Finish, finish, Spider Spider came finish in your head. Avengers <laughs> movie. Right. No, tell me about your Muslim cartoon. <laughs> I, don't ha- I don't have one of those. Iraq Horseman. Wouldn't it be great if in Titanic they cut when he's drawing Rose naked on the couch, they just cut to him drawing Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Maybe they blew up the Titanic. Jake, oh, oh my no. God. We said too much. Oh, God. 
Jake, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> 72 virgins. I can't fit on those lifeboats. What year did they put the other fool to sleep? November 10, 2009, they ended up executing John Allen Muhammad. Do you want to know what his last meal was? You know I do. You know I've been waiting a please, fucking hour and a half to figure this out. Please tell me they're broken in the house to make waffles for his last <laughs> meal. <laughs> they let him go in the kitchen. Yeah. Like, All right, we're going to turn our backs, John Al Muhammad. You better not break into this fucking <laughs> waffle commissary yeah. factory. <laughs> but uh, it was the lamest last meal that I think I've heard of. He wanted chicken with red sauce with strawberry cakes. What's red sauce? I'm guessing like fucking gravy Mexican like Like Italian gravy yeah Yeah. but ragu I don't know All right, and strawberry cakes um, it's probably what he called Lee Malvo (laughs) gay sex John he's talking about the gay sex (laughs) (laughs) but yeah they put his ass down after that meal (laughs) after he chose strawberry cakes Mm -hmm. it wasn't even his execution date yet Mm. (laughs) like I'm sorry we gotta he had no last words. What is strawberry cakes? I don't even know, man. I don't know what fucking some red sauce shit or strawberry I never heard cake. of. I know of strawberry shortcake. If you're a fan of uh, yeah, you've these been, meals. You've, you've worked in, you should know what a red sauce is, right? I was. I worked in, a, in an executioner's hall. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. I donned, I donned the Sous chef. mask once or twice myself. Just have the nostril holes cut out so I could smell the sauces. <laughs> 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 Um, no, I don't. I think red sauce, the only thing I would think of is Mexican. Just red sauce and green sauce. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Spicy. That would be a good food challenge show, like you're cooking last meals. I think you've came up with this idea multiple times. <laughs> it's Still go back in every here. episode. <laughs> Hasn't left. Nope. Won't it either. It has escaped multiple times somehow. <laughs> I got back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you forever. <laughs> JB, get my idea, earphones. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have idea headphones, Mike? Be honest with us. That was too off, too quick. Je- you want Jeff? Yeah, Jeff. He's <laughs> he's giving you the signal. Oh I god! You to tr- turn his mic off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a pen. He wants a pen. Okay, he's all of a sudden mute. What happened? Oh, I don't. No. I don't know. I'm scared to know what I just. What did you just awoken. say? If he had idea headphones, uh huh, uh huh, that he spoke it too quickly into existence to not think, be a real thing. What do you think that would be? Idea headphones? Yeah, just a pair of headphones you put on so you don't have to talk to anybody. Uh, you know, kind of like how horses have blinders. Put on a couple of beats. Yes, and when they're wearing blinders, I don't even talk to them. Yeah. Just like if someone's wearing headphones. That's what he write. I'm afraid the idea (laughs) will escape out of my mouth. (laughs) You know we're recording this, right? (laughs) Well, we can just read what he writes. We should do a whole episode like this. (laughs) Uh, tonight's stinker, Helen Keller. <laughs> Jeff, get my journal, please. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah, John Al Muhammad was executed in 2009, and Lee Malvo still going strong in prison. He's um, he, he seems, should never be let out. I know, dude. I, they should have put his ass down and too. He's married. I know. That's crazy. Who well, is that lady? I don't remember her Can name. Can we get her on the show? But she is a uh, she's a trust fund baby. Ah. Uh, Daughter of the president of the NRA. Really trying to piss her parents off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somebody... Uh, fuck, I wish I remember what family Guess she's what, from. Guess what, mom and dad? He's black. Yeah. <laughs> and also... <laughs> and Jamaican. <laughs> and gay for a little bit. Oh, you're just oh. mad because my husband's Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're... Jamaican me crazy. <laughs> he didn't say it at all. Yeah. I had to say it for him. Oh, the idea. No, yeah, don't the let ideas are gonna escape. <laughs> don't let that idea escape, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It looks like he thinks they can come out of his ears, too. <laughs> you forgot your nostrils. He thinks his ears work backwards. 
Oh, oh my God. Jeff's pulling Sean, a bunch hand of me that helmet, please. <laughs> Jeff's pulling a bunch of pictures of, of food, and I'm Chicken starving and red right sauce. now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat that monitor. Oh, my God. This is over God I would love some Taco Mexican. Bell right now. Oh, man. They're giving out free tacos every Tuesday. Why? Because they got Taco Tuesday back in their lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Or back, or I don't know. How did they else. lose it? Somebody in uh, another state said that it was theirs. Taco John's somewhere in the uh, in the West. This feels like a you scheme all over. You think I'm making Taco this Taco John? Up? You think? Mm. Are you Taco John? I'm Del Taco. Come on. Oh, okay. oh John Del yeah. Taco. Taco John Del Taco. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's me. Yeah. Uh, Taco Bell Calo. That's another one. I was born to be a fat fuck. <laughs> Um, are you not allowed? another t-shirt? Can we put that somewhere <laughs> on the jihad shirt? It's jihad, baby. I was born to be a fat fuck. <laughs> um, oh man. Anyway, yeah, they, they're, they're doing free tacos every Tuesday for the month of August into September, I think. But they're Doritos tacos only. And I don't want that. I Why want would they plain, do that? I want a plain crunchy. Ooh, um, Glenn you know what? still has the volcano tacos. What? Yeah, I got one yesterday. They're expired. Yeah, I've what's that mean, Jake? <laughs> what's that? What's a volcano taco? It's the lava sauce. It's like a spicy cheese sauce. It's so good. And it's a red shell to uh, signify heat. Uh, Got a little food coloring. What? I don't know if I like that. What the whole package? Yeah, Comes it's in just, a little little plastic. I don't know, man. Cardboard tray. Tacos are so nice on their own. I don't think you really need to jazz them up at all. Uh, you lose me at some crazy shit on it once in a while. <sighs> My favorite is just a little corn tortilla when they put a, a cilantro and onion on top, and that's Ooh, it. Ooh, yeah. Off a truck in Los Angeles yep. or something. Yeah. Those are probably the best. They do it up the street, baby. Really? Just yeah. You have a local place like that? You can get them fucking uh, gringo style, but yeah. if you just order tacos as tacos, uh, it's just cilantro tacos. and onion. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. baby. Damn. There's a good truck by Drexel, too. I could take you to Dos Hermanos. Really good uh, cilantro tacos. Yeah? Yeah. It's just cilantro. You think I need I a mean, fucking bodyguard in Drexel? Maybe. Maybe. I do. I'm so scared of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I park my car, I get scared as hell. Uh, a way to combat that is just walk around screaming. I think that sometimes. You feel good, and mm-hmm. you probably scare away most people. Oh, yeah. Wear that helmet that Mike has on right now. Yes. People will leave you alone. Tired of my neighbors thinking I'm um, talk toable. <laughs> Has anybody seen the other gay sniper? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where, oh, where has my gay sniper gone? <laughs> Jeff, I'd like to know if you've ever seen them play that live. You've been to 10 Pearl Jam shows. <laughs> have they ever played Last Kiss? Mm. They've, they have? You've seen him play that I live? Saw, I saw him play it live. Yeah. No shit. In honor of the DC snipers butt fucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they all lay down. <laughs> <laughs> they bring out a trunk. Oh, they actually brought the trunk into court. A uh, very funny visual. They cut the car. They cut the hand. car up, and they brought the trunk into court. And now the trunk is actually in that FBI museum where they will not let me go. They will not let you go. I applied. Because you have to get a uh, U.S. congressman to to give you the okay to go to the FBI museum. We could find someone. This is a public. Yeah, this museum is legit. That you need. It's public in the sense that special like special permission. John, you need a congressman to give you permission to go to the FBI museum. Does that what? just mean a U.S. senator or representative? Yes. We can find That's someone. That's crazy. I know, and I got denied. What did By you get a, a reason? Specific person? They said we're just not accepting ap- uh, applications at this time. But when you go to the link, the reason why I wanted to go there, <laughs> he said in March 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I wanted to go there is because they got Ted Kaczynski's cabin there. Oh yeah, they you moved. You see the actual cabin. Whoa. And then I noticed that they also have the fucking sniper trunk there. But this was after I'd already been denied, and I don't want to become Damn. a government bugaboo. What well, were you wearing that helmet during your Zoom interview? Government bugaboo is just a different name for Jihad Baby. <laughs> um, so you don't know who specifically denied you, or did you write to a specific congress? I did. I could tell you. Is it your local representative for the House? 
Dude, um, you know this stuff works. How many representatives are in Pennsylvania? Delaware, in Pennsylvania, least. I think there's 51. Ooh. Or 53. One for Puerto Rico. I'm just making up a number. Seven. That's the last there week's. Must be more. Seven. <laughs> there has to be more. No, I, think there, I think there's somewhere between 40 and oh, 50. Here we go. Yeah. It's something like that, yeah. No, because we have three counties in Delaware and only one rep. So I was denied. Maybe per million people. I was denied by Senator Bob Casey. Ah. I get emails from him about you. Tell him to suck his, suck his own dick. I will start. Well, Can I, you? I've been saying <laughs> that to cool. him. <clears throat> now it's about who, Pat Toomey? That's the one you would have to write. He's another one. You can you can double up. That's what I should have done. I, I think I should have sent one to both, and I, yeah. he was just the first one that came up. So, have you tried sending lingerie with your request? I have not. You might want to start. I might uh, I might put in the subject line, "Hey, big boy, sock it to me." Yeah, T O O M E Y. That'll get a response. It will. Hey, if you guys are still listening for whatever reason, uh, my tickets are live in St. Louis, baby. Ooh. And when I say tickets, buddy, I'm playing the small room yeah. in Los, uh, St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis. It's going to be tough. There's a lot of tickets. They're saying that there's too many, too many tickets to this no. thing. And uh, that I'll ne- I overheard somebody saying that I'll never be able to sell any of them. So if you even have heard of St. Louis, would you... Come and see me there. If you're thinking about taking a vacation, why not do it December 1st and 2nd <laughs> to St. Louis and come see me at the Helium Comedy Club there. I'll be headlining the small room, and they're saying there's a, a lot of tickets left. Um, congrats, buddy. Thank you. If anybody could give me a ride, I'll go with you. <laughs> and uh, the reason why I can't drive is because of too many tickets. <laughs> oh my gosh! But, yeah, we're, but, we are lousy with tickets over here. <laughs> but how fun would it be if we uh, we buddied up to drive out to St. Louis to see that would be our dear fun. friend? That would be insane if you guys to do. In fact, <laughs> it sounds like it's just turned into a little stinker showcase. Um, <laughs> I, I would. We just crash your. Showcase. I would never do that. <laughs> I would sit front row with that. <laughs> Jake and I would get that that Dude. fudge cake with the sparkler in the center of it, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> We wouldn't speak unless spoken to. Dude, I did that to Chip one time when Chip opened for uh, Louis C.K. at mm-hmm. he did Helium. Yes, I was there, and he sat front. Uh, Nick <laughs> sat me front row center. Why would he do that? Because <laughs> I was like, I, do, I was like, dude, I want to be close. Yeah, and so he got me front, front and center, and Chip <laughs> comes out to do his set, and he's just like. Jesus. <laughs> Trying to do his set, meanwhile I'm staring at him all pie eyed, just like. <laughs> Just got an email from Helium, and they added some tickets. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tickets. John's uh, a great. To be you gotta had. see him do comedy. It's if you so know fun. anybody in St. Louis, for Christ's sake, please tell him. If you've ever met somebody from St. Louis, maybe a guy that you don't talk to anymore, tell him. Tell him to come. Bring so many people. It'd be a great early Christmas present for anyone in the area. I have three and a half months to sell a lot of tickets. So they're saying that they're adding tickets. <laughs> They keep adding it. They've knocked down a wall to add more seats. <laughs> no, the room the room is still small. They're just stacking up chairs. There's just a lot of tickets. There's levels to it now. Yeah. I don't know why there's so many tickets. But I'd like to sell all of them. So please come out. There's no way I could sell them. Oh, buddy. You're one of my favorite comedians. So Thanks, pal. Yeah. Thanks. You're great, pal. And I okay. can't wait for our show in Cleveland coming up. Also, uh, my tickets to we see about us. to have fun. September 8th, Friday, September 8th in Cleveland. That's going to be fucking awesome. Shout out Chris. He shared He shared a little sh- screenshot yes. of him getting tickets. We appreciate yes, you. Yes, buddy. Thank There's you. There's at least going to be two people there. Unless That's right. he bought somebody for a ticket for a deceased person that <laughs> will save for an empty seat. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. If you want to spread ashes <laughs> during a comedy show. You better pay for the fucking ticket. Listen. <laughs> Buy a ticket to our show and just dump them on the stage right in front of us. <laughs> Check with the venue first. Make sure mm. there's no allergies, and yeah, then you can do it. And uh, at least two of us will be happy to snort some of your mother's ashes. <laughs> in that case. Which two? You'll never know. <laughs> it's all three of us. <laughs> um, did you bring up Disney earlier, or was I just thinking No, it? you were thinking of it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got this, oh, uh, the book. Yeah, I got this this great book. Because I was like, I cannot believe he just did that. (laughs) What a great segue. Did I? Did you bring up Disney earlier? (laughs) (laughs) Could you imagine having the ball? I'm going to start doing that. After nobody did that. (laughs) Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I wanted to learn more about Disney, and uh, this book. Uh, Oh no! Fell into my lap because I paid twelve bucks on Amazon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it talks about all the fucked up stuff that has happened. <laughs> they have at a Disney. Drone now. Special instructions, <laughs> please drop on my lap. I threw it in my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't wait to learn about all the fucked up shit that's happened at Disney and tell Dude, you guys about it. That rules. Is that is that going to mess with your love of Disney? That is a concern that I have, Jake. Why would you do that? Oh man, it's I don't know. It's kind of like asking your wife if you have the biggest penis she's been with. <laughs> I want to know if Disney, if I have the biggest penis that Disney's had. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna have my heart broken. <laughs> but that's awesome. So it's all scandals. It says what? Suicides. Scandals, accidents. Suicides. De- all kinds of deaths. There's not been suicides at Disney, has there? Have, yeah. There was one at Disneyland this year. A local music teacher from the Southern California area. Yeah, the day the music died. He jumped from a fucking parking garage. Oh, yeah. I heard mm. about that. That was sad. I know, man. It's a small world. I don't know if that's the appropriate joke. <laughs> it's not like inappropriate tone-wise. It goes with our show's sensibilities perfectly. Perfect, yeah. But it just didn't make it does, sense it as a fucking joke. doesn't anyway. apply, but I'll... It, <laughs> it worked with the timing. The Disney brain dunce pun. The pun dunce. <laughs> no, they, they actually... They had dunce the maid charming. from 101 Dalmatians come out, and she had a blanket over him. And now she's... <laughs> one less. No at Disney World, though, right? There's How do you... Uh, there's nothing to jump off of there. Dude, there was. So, mm, the... Um, what is that? Is it the Polynesian? What is the... Uh, the the I fucking... Had, um, I had dinner there. Chick, the monorail. What does that go yeah. through right the before you get to Disney? Grand the Floridian contemporary. And the contemporary. A guy. I think this happened in June or July. A guy fell off of a balcony at the contemporary. Yeah. Fuck. That's yeah. scary as shit. Yeah, man. What? But on purpose? I don't think so. Damn. It's dude. Set- that was a book he was writing at the time <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> he was there with his family. I, I don't think so. From the, the article that I read, it just seemed like it was an accident. But who knows? More information might have come out and. Uh, be a terrible place to do that, man. So you, I'm like, you're ready for all the accidents right now. <laughs> yeah, man, they could fucking ram that monorail right at your goddamn nugget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd make it. Small world. Oh man, it's hot down there, man. Right now, August. Yeah, August, August, August down there in the swamp. I you, bet. you thought about coming down, like going down there, like now. I did, baby. It would been too too hot for that. I would like that. Yeah. I, hey, I. Uh, I, I was born in the in the hot heat. <laughs> yeah, you big hot heat guy, huh? I was, I was born in the hot heat. What's he becoming? His Baton Rouge accent. He's bringing back oh, this sniper. Oh, he's being Cajun guy. Mm-mm. No, he's not Cajun guy. He's special needs Pennsylvania man. <laughs> Are you describing me right now? What's happening? I was hit by a monorail. <laughs> you were hit by a monorail or you stayed in the... The path of a monorail until the monorail came. I was thrown up in the sky by my daddy. My daddy was strong. Your dad threw you into the path of a monorail that was currently passing overhead. Threw me right into the nose of it. Oh my gosh. And I was knocked unconscious. Knocked unconscious? Knocked unconscious. Oh my God. That's the worst kind. Mistook me for dead. Oh. Turns out. I was alive. Did they bury you? They did momentarily in the sand. <laughs> I'm so happy he let this idea out of his mouth. <laughs> Are you? I love this. You're happy about Knucked it. Knocked unconscious. <laughs> I was dug up by a dwarf that was not associated with Snow White. That's unfortunate. What was his name? Or her name? I don't know. Oh, oh no, he's loading. He's right. loading. <laughs> <laughs> he did clip the helmet in. It's uh, Ms. Dinklage. What's her name, Jake? That's just, I guess it's a common last name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the name was Ms. Dinklage. She had had a fight with a husband. Oh no. And she was off. And I was found. They knew I wasn't dead. (laughs) 
the people that buried you knew you weren't dead or or Miss Dinklage did. Uh the the other dwarfs that were Miss Miss Dinklage. How many Whoa. did she have with her? Six more. <laughs> oh my god. And no relation to Disney whatsoever. Nope. That is a fucking coincidence. They they make pilgrimage there, Jake. This feels like one of those likeness rights issues, like Chuck Wepner and Rocky. Jake, <laughs> Disney World is... World? From, mm-hmm. That's a yeah. Pennsylvania accent. It's coming yeah. out. It's it's a midget pilgrimage. It's uh, You've heard of Mecca? Well, this is Mecca. <laughs> How about Mickey? <laughs> oh, no. His eyes went back. Oh no. oh, no. Oh, God. What happened? Is Mike coming back? Oh, God. Is the other person leaving? <laughs> Who was this person again? Uh, I need this. The, uh, the, the person wants you to hold their non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. He better be careful. That painting's going to fall on his head. <laughs> Did you understand what he said? Was that Donald Duck? Yeah. I think he said in Donald Duck voice, Jihad baby. I think sometimes he just doesn't want us to leave. (laughs) Uh, So yes, Jake, um, they were in the trunk of the car doing butt stuff with one another. (laughs) And he's not talking about the gay sex. (laughs) Hey, are you okay? Yeah. Why are you holding my beer? John's been I wanted sober. to see if a uh, non-alcoholic beer hurt my gout. Does it make it feel good? Yeah. Okay, cool. I should have been drinking it all night. You can have some. <clears throat> I got plenty more. You have a lot of liquids in front of you right now. Normally, I'm like the liquid king. Em- you, you have empty, like empty. Refresher, water, Red Bull. I need some more gout juice. Did I tell you guys about my new Disney book that I got? <laughs> no. So I'm going to learn about all the bad things at Disney. <laughs> and uh, Jake, was it you that brought up Disney earlier? No, I, I, I think you did. Mike. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm staring at my uh, my Disney uh, Thermo Flask here. Uh, and, that is uh, definitely a knockoff. Mike, wait, wait. Aren't you worried that's going to ruin your love of Disney? <laughs> no, nah, man. It's. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> People are checking their podcast. Like, did it just skip back five minutes? I hope we don't hear that impression again. It's good, man. But yeah, there are a lot of bad things that happen there. Maybe we should save it for another episode. Is there anything you guys want to mention before we go? Still plenty of tickets for me in St. Louis. <laughs> Oh, you know, I do want to give a shout out to a, a friend of our a listener, uh, Joey, who showed up at my house and fixed my air conditioner, saved my family. Did he know you had a problem before he showed up? I was <laughs> posting a lot of selfies with apples in my mouth, so he knew something was up. He knew I was cooking. Thank you, Joey. Yeah. What about you, John, who showed up at your house recently? <laughs> uh, crackhead. What did he want? Sit on our steps. Crack. Aww, did you let him? We weren't there. Oh, no. But our neighbor certainly did not. Uh, <laughs> good neighbor. Yeah. You got to keep them moving along. You do. That's why I yeah. always draw a hopscotch thing out front. That's why I have uh, Keeps them going. a bunch of spikes on my steps. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those pigeon killer things. Yeah. <laughs> Larger, sharper. Yeah. A doorbell activated hard, shotgun. Hard to get groceries in sometimes. <laughs> what about you, Mike? You got anything coming up that you want to uh, um, make the podcast longer with? Uh, we have our, our show September 8th in Cleveland at Hilarities that I can't wait for that we haven't promoted yet on this uh, episode. Then You went back far. Yeah. Then uh, also, yeah, if you haven't bought my book, uh, buy On Perks, man. That makes me makes me very happy when I see people buy the book. Yeah. You can get that book. at onperks.com. O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com. If you're not the reading type, get the audio book. It's, uh, it's even more fun than the printed copy. Thousands and thousands of copies sold. And only hundreds eaten. <laughs> <laughs> All the same guy, actually. <laughs> the most eaten book of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> it's a
It's a New York Times best taster. <laughs> <laughs> so so pretty. It's the only it's the only book with a Michelin star on it. <laughs> but I guess it's better than nothing. Hell yeah, that book fucking rules. Thank you, buddy. I'm I'm excited for your headlining set, man. Thank you. I'm excited for all the fucking cool shit we got coming up. Man, me too. Yeah, we're going away to uh we're gonna start out in Nevada, end up in California. Dude. Golly, man. Can't wait. You know we're gonna be cooking. Going to heaven. We're gonna be cooking like uh Jamaican witches. <laughs> all right. That's... Get the cauldron going. Yep. Thank you for listening <laughs> to this week's episode of Little Stinkers, everybody. Put that on the back of the jihad shirt. I mean, how fucking hard would that be? <laughs> I mean, this is a graphics-intensive shirt. But Let's just have it like a graduation list of everything that we've said. On the <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make people like buy a bunch of shirts. Like that's this the best. One. That's the most concise method apples, of delivering buck, buck. It's just, it's all, the, all these moronic ideas <laughs> that have somehow escaped my mouth and ears. In your mouth and ears. In your mouth and ears. In your Ooh. mouth and ears too. See you next time. <laughs> On oh, little stinkers, he I'm, won't let me end an episode. I'm gonna put your I'm gonna put your mouth and ears in a bar with Mouseketeers. Damn, bro, he just did it. You just did it. Mm, this motherfucker licking windows. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> he just gave me the reins. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You always want to end the episode. It was a nice gesture he gave you. Is that what it was? Yeah. (laughs) And that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for listening, guys. (laughs) Thank you, guys. (laughs) He's holding back an idea. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. Stinkers.